Life is a collection of experiences. The things we have done, the way we have lived, the people we have met who challenged, guided, and shaped our views. An extraordinary life is one where we pass on what we have learned with generosity, vigor, and honesty. It is the extraordinary life of Kathleen Stanford Grant that I would like to share with you. The story begins in 1921 in Boston, Massachusetts. Imagine yourself here, a young black girl being raised in a predominantly white neighborhood. Her dream is to become a classical ballet dancer. The reality in a racially segregated country is there's no such thing as a black classical dancer. But this is not something a young girl understands. In the early 1930s, Kathleen Stanford is admitted as the first black student in the Boston Conservatory of Music's dance program. Just one of many firsts that Kathleen goes on to pioneer. Like all young dancers, Kathleen dreams of New York City. In the mid-1940s, Kathleen moves to New York, still with the hopes of becoming a classical ballerina. When she arrives in the city, she quickly learns her options are limited and she takes a job as a chorus girl at the Zanzibar nightclub. The Zanzibar is a place where black performers play to white-only audiences. There are many doors shut to Kathleen's dreams, but that does not stop her. She wants to dance, and she is both talented and determined. Kathleen goes on to dance in Broadway's first racially integrated show titled Finian's Rainbow. She moves abroad and performs professionally for five years in Europe and in the Middle East, enjoying the freedom that many black Americans dream of before coming back to a still racially divided America. With the odds still against her and on the heels of the civil rights and feminist movements, Kathleen continues to follow her dreams. But in the early 1950s, Kathleen sustains a severe injury to her knee while performing. Her dancing is brought to a halt. A fellow dancer tells Kathleen to go see a man who will help her with her injury. This friend promises that this man will make her dance again. And in 1953, Kathleen begins her studies with Joseph H. Pilates, a meeting that profoundly shapes her life. Kathleen does dance again, and she continues to study with Mr. Pilates. It's at this time that her career explodes. In 1957, she takes a job assisting Corolla Trier in the second Pilates studio to open in New York City. Studious and curious, Kathleen finds in Corolla yet another teacher who would go on to inspire her own creativity and healing skills. In 1964, she becomes one of the first students to be certified to teach the work of Joseph H. Pilates. In 1965, she travels to Guinea, West Africa, with activist and performer Harry Belafonte as a cultural consultant on a special project to record, film, and study the music and dances throughout the country. In 1967, she becomes the director of the Clark Center for the Performing Arts in New York City, pioneering access to arts education and performance opportunities for minorities. In 1970, she joins Arthur Mitchell in a one-year grant-funded project to create the first black American classical ballet company, and Dance Theater of Harlem was born. In 1971, she is the first black American to serve on the National Endowment of the Arts panel. In 1972, she is invited to take over the Pilates studio at Henry Bendel's department store. It is here that she begins to develop her unique and inspired techniques for teaching what today we call the Pilates method. In 1983, she is invited to work as assistant choreographer on a Francis Ford Coppola movie titled The Cotton Club. In the late 1980s, Kathy Grant, as she has come to be known in the Pilates industry, moves her studio from Bendel's to New York University's Tisch School of the Arts Dance Department. 
She continues to craft her techniques and open her heart to the countless students that flock to her classes and to her tiny studio. For the next 30 years, Kathy dedicates herself to this work and to the dancers, the artists, and the injured who she guides with her poetry, her hands, and her grace. She gives generously and wholeheartedly, teaching all of us to know ourselves, our potential, our bodies. Her work becomes a culmination of an extraordinary life led. It was never predictable to be with Kathy. Hers was a tough love, but a love that gave you what you needed to improve, to face your limitations, and to surpass your expectations. She gave us ourselves. She gave us our freedom. When Kathy died in 2010 at the age of 88, she left us with an enduring gift, the example and the wisdom of how to hold ourselves in this world. I invite you to get to know and be inspired by the extraordinary life and work of my teacher, my friend, my mentor, Kathleen Stanford Grant.